fake news. That's our hot topic for tonight, fake news. How many of you have heard this word, or two words actually, fake news? Raise your hand, please. Y'all are just, I'm going to have you dancing by the time it's over tonight. Uh, fake news, we've heard about it, right? It's something that's all over. It is the buzzword all across our nation and the media outlets everywhere. Fake news this, fake news that. And we're going to talk about fake news, but we're going to put a little spin on it because I'm not going to get into a political debate. I'm not going to tell you uh, which uh, party you should be for or whether this news is fake or not. But we're going to talk about fake news tonight. You hear about it all over the place. You hear about fake news. You hear Russia. You hear Putin. You hear collusion. All these words. And it's like, it's everywhere. Get it out of my head, right? It's everywhere you go. You go into uh, Starbucks. It's on the TVs there. You go wherever you go. It's on the TV. It's everywhere. Fake news. And uh, I want to address the subject tonight, uh, but I don't want to talk about fake news as like, ah, this article is not true or, not, or it is true. I want to talk about the concept of fake news in a way that can help you live for God, okay? Fake news, all right? Uh, now, we have this thing, it's called the news cycle. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, if I, I did some research, I was like, man, that's a lot of work, you know? Uh, did y'all, who remembers the time when there wasn't 24-hour news? Does anybody remember that time? All right, those are the older folks in the room. That's, is that funny? That's funny, isn't it? Listen, there was a time, actually up until seven years before I was born, so 1980, there was a man named Ted Turner. He founded CNN. This was CNN, if you didn't know, was the very first 24-hour news network, and they covered the Gulf War, and that was what led to this popular uh, style of news. Now, every news article, every news station, is what, what they're doing is they're fighting for the big story, to get it out first, to get the flashing headline, the get the, the clickbait. That's another, that could be a hot topic, but uh, to get the, that, that headline out there and get it in your face so it'll grab your attention. Um, every station wants to capture your attention with their headline. Have you noticed that? Every single one. Every station wants to capture your attention with your headline. Now, where does this go when it comes to the Bible, fake news, headlines? Here's what I want to ask. Um, I, I think that this idea of capturing our attention is a lot like every other part of the world, too. Uh, we are constantly bombarded by stuff in this world that wants our attention from every angle. Everything in the world is vying for your time. It's pulling for your energy. It's like the world is full of squirrels. Anyone? Squirrel. You know, everywhere. You walk, you go to work, and there's, it just it sucks the time out of you. You go to school, some of you, and school has just got you laser focused on school. You come to church. You go everywhere you go. Uh, you are being bombarded with something that says, I am important. Look at me. Pay attention here. I'm important. You need to do whatever I'm all about. And this is what I want to call fake news. The question tonight I want us to answer and I want you to think about is this. Is your life captured, listen, is your life captured by the headlines of this world? Or are you focused and is your life captured on the headlines of heaven? That's where I'm going. Fake news. See, fake news is not what you hear on CNN. Fake news, rather tonight, are those things, those attention grabbers, okay? Those attention grabbers in this world that pull us away from the things that really matter. That's how we're going to define it tonight, okay? You with me on it? We're talking about fake news tonight. Fake news. So, so let me just explain again in case you didn't get it. Fake news may be, let me, let me give you some examples. It could be a consumer mindset or a materialistic attitude that takes your heart, it says, this stuff is important, and it takes your heart and puts it on stuff instead of your heart being on the Savior, okay? Fake news, uh, something that grabs your attention. It could be a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a relationship that has your hopes and dreams all wrapped up when instead... You should have your hopes and dreams wrapped up in Jesus, who he came, the Bible says he's our all in all. He is our life. 
It could be that fake news that's affecting you, something that's saying, I'm important, pay attention to me, is your career. Uh, your career. It's got these headlines and it's flashing out to you. Listen, I'm important. Listen, you can make money. You can have a great retirement years. You can go on trips. You can go on vacations and your job is pulling your attention from other things that are more important. These fake news headlines that we are constantly bombarded with are distractions. They take us away from what's most important. Fake news is bottled up in these three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now, why is fake news called fake news? The word fake means it's an imitation of the real thing, okay? That's the idea. Now, obviously, in the news, we're like, ah, is it fake? Is it not fake? We don't know, uh, you know, but... The word fake is just talking about an imitation of the real thing. And there are, there's something right now that's got you, and it's screaming at you, I'm real. I'm important. You should give me your time. You should give me your energy. You should give me your life. And it's screaming, I'm the real deal. But you know what? It's not. There's something else that's more important. And so that's where we want to go tonight, and that's what we want to talk about my, my purpose tonight is, the, and what I would like us to see is that every Christian in this room must recognize fake news and decide to focus instead on the realities that are found in the Word of God. There are certain things that say, in this life, I, I, it's important. Money, career, whatever. But there are other things, realities in Scripture, that are much more important. So you're in Romans chapter 12. Everyone there? If you're not, go ahead and turn there because I'm not there yet. All right, Romans chapter 12. Now, if I'm correct, this was the message, Pastor Michael, Romans chapter 12, where he talked on worship. Uh, that's where he began, and it's very interesting. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12. The Bible says, I beseech you, or I, I beg you, uh, I'm asking you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, it says, uh, I, because... Uh, all of this stuff before chapter 12 is talking about salvation and sin and the fact that Jesus gave his life for us. And he says, because of that, I'm asking you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, this verse is telling us that when we are saved, we are changed. We have to change our thinking, okay? When we are saved, we're no longer the same. We are born into a new family. Uh, you are taken out of the family where we are of our father, the devil, and we're placed into a new family, the family of God, okay? We have things that are different that happen spiritually in our life, and those things, the Bible is here to help us to, to become a fully mature Christian so those things can come out. Look in verse number 2. Here's what we're to do. We're supposed to offer ourselves unto God a living sacrifice. Look at verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that perfect and acceptable, uh, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed. Do you know what that word means, conformed? means pressed into a mold. You think of uh, playing with Play-Doh. I have my kids here with me, and, and they play with Play-Doh. And uh, that's the idea is you take that Play-Doh and you, you push it. You're forming it. There's something on the outside that's telling it how it should be shaped. And that is exactly what the world wants us to do. The, and, and as Christians, we are not to conform or be fit into the mold of the world. The world wants to shape our minds to think a certain way, to want certain things, to live for certain things. It wants to press us into a mold. But we're not supposed to be, remember this, moldy Christians, okay? Don't be moldy. Don't fit into the mold. You are not supposed to be conformed, but you are supposed to be, what's the word here? Transformed. Can you say that with me? Transformed. When we get saved, we're not supposed to let the theories of the world or the desires of the world or all the stuff that the world, all those headlines that are coming at us, this is important, this is important. Those things, we're not supposed to let those mold us. We're supposed to take a look instead at the Word of God. And we're supposed to let the Word of God transform us. And here's 
what I mean by this. And we're going to get into our study. This is going to be a bit of a topical study, but I want you to follow along with me. If you can't keep up here, uh, Richard's going to keep them up on the screen, or Josh will. Go, Josh. You're the man, buddy. All right. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Here's what this means. We're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Philippians 3, 20 says this. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look to the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. This verse in, in uh, Philippians 3, talking about our conversation, that word conversation isn't talking about like how we talk with each other. You know, we think of a conversation. It's actually the, the word meaning citizenship. You understand? Our citizenship, the Bible says, is in heaven. Here's, if you want to take some notes, here's, here's how I want to explain this tonight. Uh, as Christians, our loyalty should be in heaven because that's where we're going. You understand? You have been at the point of salvation taken out. You're no longer a citizen of this earth. Uh, there's that song, this, I'm, I'm not going to sing it, but you know, this world is, you know, should I sing it? No, I don't want to sing it. No, this world is not my home. I'm my Come on, somewhere beyond the, the, the angels beckon me from heavens. I don't know the rest of the word. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Yeah, good job, everyone. We got through it together. Listen, there is a spiritual truth that your loyalty should not lie here. Listen, when it comes to fake news. Some of you are, are all wrapped up with the actual fake news on CNN or, or Fox. Do you realize that we, sometimes we get so tied up in what's happening on Fox News or what's happening on Facebook and we're sucked in and our focus is here and we're negative about it and we're talking about it and it just consumes us. This is fake news where it's saying, I'm important, I'm important. Do you know what? It's not true. It's not important. You're lo you, you are spending time focused on stuff here when your loyalty should be to heaven. Do you understand? Uh, we're wrapped up in things like politics or news. Sometimes we're wrapped up in sports. I don't always relate to that. I'm not a sports fan. I can't tell you all the stats of the different players, what they're doing, drafts. I don't know how that works. Uh, I know there's a, there's a sport called football because I played that before. I know how the game works. I know there's basketball, uh, baseball. Soccer's not a real sport. Uh, I know that, but um, we called people that played soccer in high school, we called them lawn fairies. That's what we called them. I don't really know. That's just, that's what we called them, uh, whatever that means. But some of us are paying attention to the headlines right here and now on this earth. So have you ever thought about what makes headlines in heaven? Yeah. Luke chapter 15, verse 7. Those of you that have been in the Bible and Christian for a while might know this. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Um, I understand that you live in the United States, okay? Uh, but there's a, a, a principle that reigns true, not just for United States Christians. You know, there's Christians all over the world. And our loyalty no longer lies, though we are patriots and we love our country for the freedoms God bless us, but your main loyalty lies in heaven. And we need to rethink, are we believing this, uh, what we're calling tonight, fake news, this, this idea that Stuff here is all that important that it should get all of our time and energy and it should get us all upset and worked up. Sometimes you, you all can get so worked up, and I can do the same thing about something on the news, but when we hear about somebody getting saved, it's like, oh yeah, eh, not a big deal. That's a problem. Our loyalty should be in heaven. The, the, he the headlines of heaven should get us excited, okay? Okay. Um, Another thing, uh, Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 19. Listen to these verses. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, upon earth. 
where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Point number two tonight, your treasure should be in heaven, because you're going there, all right? Kind of got a theme going on here. Listen, we're not citizens here, we're citizens there. The same thing is true is that our treasures are not supposed to be here. We're supposed to, we're not, the whole world says, listen, buy this, uh, get this thing and then get more of it. And we're advertised to like crazy. You can't watch a YouTube video, Facebook, you can't, you're just advertised all the time. How many of you like to shop on Amazon? We got any Amazon shoppers in here? Isn't it crazy when you shop on Amazon and then you go and like, you can like share photos of your family on Facebook. For some reason, you're, whatever you were looking at on Amazon is on Facebook. And they're telling you you should buy it. Buy it right now because it's a great deal. Um, there's always a great deal. But the truth is, this world is constantly telling us, headline after headline, buy this, get this. Stuff is where it's at. It's going to make you happy. But Jesus tells us we should renew our minds with another way of thinking. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Listen, your valuables as a Christian should not be here. How many of you struggle with that? I struggle with that. We get so caught up and we spend so much of our time. We're working and working and we'll work overtime and extra time to get stuff. We'll rearrange our priorities and our budgets and our schedules and everything so that we can accumulate treasures But the Bible says about these treasures here, uh, whether that's money, whether that's a car, whether that's just stuff you're buying, clothing, all of that on earth is going to go away, okay? But we need to lay up treasures in heaven, things that last forever. Third point here, your heart should be in heaven. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 2. This is kind of a weird message, but uh, we're talking about fake news. And um, the Bible says that we're to set, to set your affection on things above. Set. Uh, that word set indicates that we have a choice to make, that we have an ability to take our heart and choose what it looks at, to choose where our love is placed. And it says to set our affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Why? For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Um, Has heaven ever felt like a really distant thing for you all? Anybody with me on that? Sometimes heaven does. It feels distant. Why does heaven feel so far away? Why does it feel like, ah, that might be real? We know it's real. See, we're, we're so, we've thrown this thing that the earth, that this life that we live here is all that there is. But in the scale of eternity, if you've got this line uh, going this way through eternity, do you know our life is only just a dot and eternity continues on forever. And the Bible gives us this idea that we ought to set our heart on things above, on things that matter for God, on things that, that matter to God. And we should do that because the Bible says, ye are dead. When you are born again, the Bible has this weird idea and this weird thing it teaches. And it says that our life is no more. See, we are bound to Jesus Christ. And in the fact that he died unto sin and he died, we died with him. Somehow we get this spiritual death with Jesus. And it's the idea that Whoever we were before Christ, that lusting, uh, f- flesh gratifying, selfish person, is now being put to death, and we are free to walk with Christ through the rest of our life. And it's the, the, the verse is saying here says, Listen, stop worrying about yourself and your stuff and everything that's right here, because you know what? Your life is not anymore, and you, you're not living for yourself. That's not who we are. We are now living for and with Christ. Our life is hid with Christ in God. And do you know where Jesus is at right now? He's in heaven, right? 
See, our focus ought to be in heaven because that is where we're going. Our life is all about Christ. He is not about this world. He's about another world. He's not about his business. He's about his father's business. Now, I want to bring it all together here, and hopefully that this can uh, make sense to you all. When something is grabbing for your attention this week, I want to, I want to make this very practical. Uh, you're going to get up tomorrow. Uh, how many of you going into work? Going into work? All right. So you need to get up. Some of you are have your whole day tomorrow planned out, scheduled out. And Lord willing, we will be able to wake up tomorrow and go through our day. But there are things that are going to grab for your time. People, job, uh, goals that you have. And we need to be able to stop for a second and consider whether or not that headline, that flashy object is something we should be giving our time to. And here's three questions I want to give you simply uh, that you can filter out the things that are grabbing for your attention. All right? to know that you're spending your time where it should be spent, that your focus is correct. Number one, we need to ask the question, how long does it last? How long does it last? Proverbs 23, 5, the Bible says, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. You have to pay attention to what you're paying attention to. And tomorrow, you're going to have something that's going to flash up in your face, and it's going to ask for your energy. But you have to ask the question, how long is this going to last? The Bible said that we're not to lay up our treasures on earth because uh, one day moth and rust is going to corrupt them. That car that you're working so hard toward or that, that object that you own that takes all your time, how long is that really going to last? A couple months? A couple years? Listen, if it only lasts temporarily, you've got to realize you've got fake news yelling at you. Pay attention to me. I'm important. But in reality, there's something much more important. You see, sometimes things, and, and this is just where we have to, uh, uh, to consider our time. Sometimes there are church events that come up. Sometimes there are priorities with people. I... I know that we're going to be starting up our life groups, and within our life groups and even our adult Bible fellowship classes, there are times when people have needs, and sometimes those needs ask for your time, and sometimes we'll consider the need to go eat out or the need to get coffee or the need to watch a television show more important than the need to care for a person. Um, I was reading this book, and I'm going to try and re- relay this story to you. It, uh, it's a book called No Easy Jesus, and I, I was been reading this book, and it's really been enlightening to me. He, he talks about uh, caring for others and how we have wrong priorities. And he, he goes on and tells a story about how he was driving home one day. The, the author is telling a story. He's driving home, and on his way home, there was an accident up in front of him. All the cars were stopping, and he could see a conversion van up on the road. And then uh, down in the ditch, there was a car, a small white car. And as he got up closer to the accident, this uh, small white car was there. A man was outside, uh, and he was kind of approaching the scene, one of the first people there. And the author could see that the man's face had turned pale. He saw something he didn't want to see. Uh, and the author said, you know, keep driving, don't get involved, just keep going. And, you know, there's already people there. And so the next day, he, he heard on the news exactly what had happened. And there was a couple teenagers that had passed away in an accident. And uh, so he, he knew what was going on. Well, a couple days later, he was driving that same road home from work and there was several cars parked alongside of the road where the accident was. And he goes on to explain that he could tell that there were people out there crying and mourning, and something in his heart said, stop, care for the people. And that was obviously the Holy Spirit, and we have tugs on our heart like that where people have a need, and we say, oh, should I get involved? Oh, I already have plans. Oh, should I stop what I'm doing? Oh, I already have plans. And he, he had plans somewhere to be, and so... He, he fought with himself on the inside that he should continue and he should just go home. And 
he got a little bit further down the road and he really got convicted and turned that car around. And he was come back by again. He thought, man, uh, they already have people out there. What could I say to them? How helpful could I really be? And, and so he, he continues, but this time he kind of had that fight again with himself and he decided to stop. The story goes on that he got out of the car and noticed a woman that was crying, just sobbing. And he saw the age of the woman, kind of realized this is one of the parents. This is the mother of one of these teenagers that passed away. And he said he went up to her and gave her a hug. And uh, she just was crying on him. He didn't know her and she didn't know him, but he just said, I'm so sorry for your loss. And he begins to explain that that happened for a few minutes. And he just turned around, got in his car and left. And when he got home, he realized that on his shirt was uh, some tears, some tear stains and mascara from this woman that was crying. And uh, what, what he said was, so often uh, he is fine with just going about those things that seem important. And all he will do is stop and say, God, please comfort them. God, please comfort them. And, and haven't we done that before? God, they have a need. Uh, please help them. Please send somebody to help them. I've got whatever going on. And he said, so often we just want to ask God to take on people's tear stains and mascara. That's what he was saying. Uh, that we don't want to do that ourselves, But God says, yeah, okay, I want to comfort them. Well, that's your job. As long as we are spending our time on things that don't last, we're going to miss those important stops that God has for us. People, they have souls, and they last forever. And what's vying for your time? If it's between a TV show or a movie or something fun to do or something that's temporary, you need to ask the question, Will this last or not? And very much, very many times, people need to trump that, but we, we don't allow that to happen. So first question, how long does it last? We need to evaluate that. Question number two, will it truly satisfy? Will it truly satisfy? It goes along. See, some things are temporary and some things last forever. Do you know what? When you are working so hard and your life is consumed with whatever that job goal is, and some of you guys in here are so goal-oriented and you can't wait to save and save and make money, and you want to you hit these goals and you want to accumulate. Do you know what happens when you set a goal, I'm going to make X amount of dollars. You know what happens when you hit that amount of money? You want more. It's not enough. You, you, need a, you need to make another $10,000 a year. And then when you get that amount, you know what you need to do? You make higher goals and you got to get more. When we're asking, is this fake news? Is this thing I'm giving my attention to really important? We have to ask the question, does it truly satisfy? Do you know that sin, temptation, lust, money, stuff, it only lasts temporarily? It's exciting. It's cool, but it, it doesn't last forever, and it, it goes away. See, we need to spend our time on things that will truly give lasting satisfaction. Listen to this verse in Hebrews 13. Let your conversation, now this word conversation is our lifestyle. Let your lifestyle, your conversation be without covetousness. Oh, boy. And be content with such things as ye have. But I want more. And I'm going to spend my time on getting more. Listen, there's Jesus, the Bible saying here, your life, don't let it be characterized by wanting and wanting and wanting. Why not? What's the alternative? Be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You know, the only way to fight covetousness and discontentment is to realize there's only one thing or one person that will satisfy you. If you can't be content with what Jesus said, your food and clothing, and be content with him as your contentment, you'll never be content. All this other stuff that we spend our time on, we're going to want more and more and more. So first question, how long does it last? Is it temporary or eternal? Second question, will it truly satisfy Stuff and money, it always leaves us wanting more. And here's the third question you can ask. Will I have regrets? 
Will I have regrets? Um, will I regret having spent my time on this? There was one quote, and I'll, I'll finish with this. I, heard, I read a book. I like reading books. Anyone like reading? You should read some books. It's good for you. Um, quote in a book said this. It's by a man named Mark Cahill. He said, if it doesn't matter on the day you die, it doesn't matter. Think, think about it. If you're, if you're spending this week and you're trying to accumulate something or, or you're planning, I've got to do this thing. I've got to go on this vacation. I've got to have this promotion. I've got to be popular. I've got to have this stuff. And you've got your energy on that. Let me ask you, on the day that you die, 30 seconds after you take your last breath, how much, how is that going to matter? Are you going to regret having spent your time on that thing? Are you going to regret having spent your energy on that? That's a great question to ask when you're trying to figure out if it's important or not. Because if it doesn't matter on the day you die, it doesn't matter. Popularity, uh, stuff, cars, position, authority, power, all of these things are things we pursue every day. Wanting to be in charge, wanting to have it all. But at the very end of our life, are you going to regret having spent all that time trying to get that stuff? It's going to be all gone. If it doesn't matter, on the day you die, it doesn't matter.